So, Father Franz, uh, you told me that you uh, came to Asia at the age of 25. That's correct, yeah. How many In 1965, years? as a newly ordained priest, I was sent to Taiwan. And I spent there 15 years of my life as a missionary in Taiwan. And after that? Then I was transferred to Singapore. Mm. In 1981, I came to Singapore. Mm. And where did you do your training uh, in your community? Well, I am a CICA missionary, so my training was done in Belgium. Uh, philosophy I did in French, in the south of Belgium. And my theology, one year in Brussels and three years in Leuven. Mm. In Louvain. Mm. And what, 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 what has been the effect of living in Asia on your, on your understanding of Christ and of your living of the gospel? Yeah. Well, it was quite a shock, I would say, in coming to Taiwan, realizing that 95% of the people there do not even know the existence of Christ. So I thought, if I had to bring Christ here, if I had to bring God here, and I realized very soon that God has always been there. But are people aware of the presence of God? So, and then try to, I was really mesmerized and, and intrigued by visiting Buddhist temples in Taiwan. As a young missionary, we visited some temples there, and I saw those Buddhist uh, monks and Buddhist nuns, no? a great serenity, a great simplicity, as a result of their meditation. And I always was wondering, what is their experience? No? What makes them so simple, so serene, so, so confident? So, so yeah, the great simplicity and serenity of those Buddhist monks and, and nuns I, I visited. That, that always. Did it make you feel that they had something that you did oh, not? Oh, yes, yes. And I ever thought, but I never materialized, but I ever thought if I have uh, one day time and I would maybe retire no, from active service to make a study. What? do those people, but motivates them to spend their whole lives in temple, spend a lot of time in meditation. And as a matter of fact, in Taiwan, there's a tremendous move no, of young people who join uh, Buddhist temples. In Puli, there's a great big temple, and they have over 1,000 uh, nuns and, and monks who, who mm -hmm. live there in great simplicity of lifestyle. So they must have an experience that is very fulfilling, otherwise they would not go there, they would not stay. So Asia, it sounds to me, uh, introduced, or sh introduced you really to the contemplative yeah. dimension of spirituality. What was your, your own training as a priest in that respect? Did it, did, were you introduced to it in some way? during your formative years? Well, in the, in the seminary we were taught to, to meditate, but it was very much the cerebral, intellectual, analyzing the Bible text, trying to identify, trying to, to, to pray to God for gifts that we thought we needed. So that was very cerebral, and we were taught in the seminary, in the novitiate anyhow, to meditate twice a day. But as young guys of 18, 19, that was quite a chore. And I think many of us felt it very hard. And once the, the novitiate was over, well, I was 19, my classmates, most of them were slightly older, but I think none of us persevered in doing it twice a day. Mm. Uh, I tried to remain faithful to my daily meditation, uh, reading a book by known spiritual writers and just no, go through it, uh, read it once or twice and try to to get some spiritual nourishment from those readings. But it was quite yeah, intellectual, I would say, analytical, more than uh, experiencing the presence of God. Does it seem strange to you now, looking back, of how many years have you been a priest now? It will be 44 years. Hmm. So looking back over, the, over 44 years, does it seem strange to you now that in that formation that you received in the Nivishat and in theology and uh, philosophy, that you weren't introduced to a contemplative way of prayer or contemplative experience of prayer? Okay, so I, I would think that that dimension of prayer was not sufficiently, I think, brought to our attention. So it was uh, more encouraged to continue to be faithful to our daily meditation more in the intellectual, cerebral, analytical way. 
uh, we were taught that there were other ways and that God would lead us, God would guide us maybe from one stage of meditation into another. And I must confess that coming to Asia, I, I like to read books and I, I did my own homework reflecting upon on the, on, on the presence of God. And that word no, really fascinates me ever more, the, the presence of God. I would say, as distinct from the existence of God. I think God's existence is more philosophical. Does God exist? God knows. But the, the presence of God, I think, and the more we are aware of and immersed in the presence of God, I believe, the more our lives become very fulfilling and there is like a, a deep awareness and almost a bodily sense, I would say, glow of, of, of the presence of God wherein we live and move and have our own, our own existence. So, so in that way, I, I thought that Christianity becomes more like experiencing God the way Jesus experienced God. To, to sense the presence of God the way he sensed it. Which I think is wonderfully expressed when, when the Philip in the Gospel of John says, Lord, show us God, your Father. He said, but Philip, how can you ask that question? No? When you see me, you see God. Because I dwell in God, and God dwells in me. And in that way, no, I think the, the, the Bible or the experience of Jesus is not a matter of archaeology, that it happened to him 2,000 years ago. That we can, with some nostalgia, some sad feelings, say, well, good for him, but what about us? I believe what has happened to Jesus, and that is very sound theology, I think, no, must happen to us, that we too live in God and that God lives in us, and to grow ever deeper aware of that, I believe that is for me like the essence of, of our faith. What is